Cars, the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Kern County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars broadcast 239 regarding a holdup and kidnapping. Suspect described as American, 5 feet 9 or 10 inches tall. Weight about 150 pounds. Appeared to be a young man. This man is armed and dangerous. That's all. Rose Euclid. Every time you step on the starter, friends, you toss that motor of yours into the ring for a battle royal against the ganged-up forces of friction and wear, egged on by hot summer weather and high speed. And if it has its guard down, as usually is the case when you've trained it on the knockout drops of mediocre oil, your motor is going to take it on the chin and be counted out sooner or later. Keep its guard up, friends, with real lube. Teach it to not only block blows, but to fight back, knocking the enemies of motor efficiency right through the ropes in the very first round. With stout-hearted, two-fisted real lube on your side, the battle is won. For this great lubricant never wilts in the heat of the fray, never lets his foes get set for a haymaker, and has never yet lost a decision. Drop around at the red and white Rio Grande station nearest you in the morning and sign up real lube as the bodyguard for your motor. You'll get longer life and liberty in your pursuit of motoring happiness with real lube, which is the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. to hear tonight was taken from the confidential files of the office of Sheriff Ed Champness of Kern County. We have the privilege of having him with us tonight to open our program. Sheriff Champness. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is pleasant to speculate on a cure for crime, but so far nobody has ever found one. I think this program is probably doing as much to bring home the fact that crime is a losing proposition as any other single agency. But for some reason, we have never been able to understand men still think they can beat the game, still think that they can pit their puny whips against a machine designed from the beginning to beat them. Trying to beat the law is like playing a slot machine. The odds are hopelessly against you. You can't win. Our program tonight will show how one man played the game and how he lost. What stakes he did get I will tell you at the end of the program. In a little town in Illinois, Howard Clinton Owen was growing up. We consider the case of Howard Owen, aged eight, as he enters the kitchen of his home. I want some bread and butter and jam. Well, you just had lunch. Sit along now and play. I don't want to play. I want some bread and butter and jam. Well, you can't have it. I'm not going to stop my dishwashing just to wait on you. I know you're not hungry. I am hungry. Who are you yelling at? Are you? I want some bread and jam. Well, you just march yourself right outside and play. You wait till I finish my work. Then come in here and ask for it right, and I may give you some bread and jam. I want it now. I don't want to play. I want something to eat. You'll get something you don't want if you keep up that crime. You know your father's trying to sleep. I don't care. I'm hungry. What's all this racket about? Don't you know I'm trying to get some sleep? I don't care. Oh, you don't care? Well, maybe I can change your mind for you. Maybe I can make you care. I'll give you something to yell about. Oh, 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 how do you suppose he'll feel when he's 16? Get off the porch. Go out in the yard and play and stop that sniffling. No! Oh, let him alone. What do you expect him to do after that beating you give him? Now, listen, you. You keep out of this. The sooner you make up your mind to conquer that brat's temper, the better off we'll all be. You'll never do it by whipping him. You've tried that ever since he was big enough to walk. And he's worse now than he ever was. Oh! Look out! What was that? Howard threw that rock through the window. He threw that at me just wait till I get my hands on him. Frank, wait! Be careful what you do. Come here to me, you. I'll teach you. Day by day, the own home became worse. Howard was a constant source of trouble. At last, in desperation, he was sent east to his grandmother in a small town in upstate New York. Howard, Howard, where are you? 
you, Sonny. Hi, I'm Granny in the backyard with Johnny. Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello. Sonny, I want you to run over to the grocery and get me some... Why, where is that kitten? Why, what kitten, Why, Granny? The one that's crying. Is it in... Yes, here it is in the rain barrel. Why, the poor little thing's half drowned. I oh, know he ain't, Granny. He's got nine lives, and this is only the first time he's been How Howard Owens, did you put this kitten in that rain barrel? Yes, ma'am, he sure did. You shut him out, Johnny Wolf. Well, what if I did put him in there? He ain't hurt much. He would have been if I hadn't happened to come out here and pulled him out of that barrel. I can't understand what makes you so cruel, Sonny. Don't you know it's sinful to hurt dumb animals? Ah, it's only a kitten. But it has feelings just the same as you have. You ought to have seen that old girl down at the beach yesterday when Howard came... Out... tail. What about the little girl, Johnny? Well, she was sitting on the sand and her feet were sticking straight out. Now look out, Johnny Wolf. Go on, Johnny. Well, a man throwed a cigarette away and Howard picked it up and... He, he didn't smoke it, did he? No, ma'am, he... If you tell, I'll fix you. He stuck the cigarette to the bottom of the little girl's foot and he burned. Howard, you didn't. Howard... Put that stick down. I told you not to tell hey, you. Nice. Keep away from me now. You won't tell on me again. I've got you. Don't you hear me? Oh, 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 stop it. Do you hear me? Oh, stop that. hitting Johnny oh, with that stick. Oh, 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 Years filled with escapades of young Howard Owen. Time after time, he is hailed into juvenile court, lectured, released. Time after time, he is sent to schools for wayward boys, but each time he returns, more determined than ever to make life miserable for those around him. Thus, at 15, we find him again in the court of justice. Well, Joe, I see your pet is back again. Oh, uh, you mean that orange kid? Mm. Yeah, I haven't had trouble with that brat for longer than I can remember. Ten years old when you got him, wasn't he? You mean when I chased him through the park the first time? Mm. Yeah, he was about ten, I guess. Yeah, he's 15 now. Been in juvenile hall five times since he was 12. Well, I hope you keep him this time. Yeah, maybe the judge will find some place for him. He's got a burglary charge against him, Grand Larceny. That ought to hold him a while. Where'd you pick him up? Well, I got a call from one of his neighbors that he was prowling around the garage with another kid. So I drove out there just as they were leaving. Gee, Howard, you sure you can drive this car? Sure, why not? Gee, I'm scared. Ah, you're a sissy. What'd you come with me for if you're yellow? Oh, I ain't yellow. I'm just afraid you can't get the car started. There she goes. What'd I tell you? Gee, this is swell. Hey, where are we going? Oh, I don't know. We'll take her out on the pike and open her up. Gee, you're a pretty good driver. Yeah, I told you I knew how to drive. Hey, Howard, there's a car falling. It's got a red light. Huh. Hey, well, what are we going to do? Shut up. They ain't caught us yet. Hey, that, that car's gaining. Yeah, well, I'll have to go something to catch this baby. Hey, he's sure stepping on it. Yeah, well, so am I. Take a look at that speedometer. Gee, 60... Boy, that's awful fast. Ah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Boy, is this a bus or ain't it? Boy, you're leaving that cop way behind. Look out, we gotta turn. Hey, Howard, you can't make it. Howard, you Owen's kid wasn't hurt much, but the other boy's pretty badly banged up. I got to him just after the crash, and Owen's put up a tough battle before I could bring him in. Here comes the judge. Maybe he'll put a break on the young hoodlum. Well, young man, have you anything further to say this morning? No. Please, please, judge. Let me have the boy. I'm an old woman. I need him. He'll be a good boy, won't you, Sonny? Ah, stop gabbling. Young man, I've stood about all of your arrogance I intend to. Your grandmother has stood by you from the start of this trial. It's over now. And it's my duty to decide what shall be done with you. Well, get it over with. It is the sentence of this court that you be confined in the state reformatory for a period of not less than one and not more than 20 years. And I hope by the time you've finished your sentence that you will have learned your lesson. Uh, don't worry. I'll learn. Plenty. <laughs> It'd be a swell idea if you try to play the game when you get to the school. Yeah? You can get along if you try. Oh, I won't give them no trouble if they don't give me none. But you let them start picking on me and they'll get plenty of it. Make it easy on yourself, kid. I suppose when you get through telling them about me, they'll make it plenty tough. You make your own record. It's not any of my business to tell anybody about papers, you. Books, magazine, magazine, sonny. We don't want none. Liberty, Saturday evening post. I told you we don't want none. Treasure Island? Here's a nice book for a little fella. The Rover Boys at school. You better peddle your paper somewhere else. 
Oh, tough, huh? You're just asking for trouble, fella. He talks mighty tough not to be any bigger than he is. Yeah? Well, I'm big enough to throw these books out of the window. Like this. But... Hey, cut that out. And these papers. Uh, stop him. And the rest of your junk. That'll cost you plenty, young fella. Yeah, we'll try and get it. Look here, mister. This your kid. Fine. Are you crazy? Well, well and whose is he? Is he yours, lady? Lord, no. Is this your kid, mister? If he was, I'd wait till the daylight out of Where's the superintendent's office, Sonny? Right there, first door to the right. Thank you. Come in. Go on, Howard. Oh, well, you're Howard Owen, hmm? Yeah. Yes, what? Just, yeah. Mm hmm. Have a nice trip, Howard? Yeah. We might as well understand each other, Howard. One of the first things we learn here is respect for the law and those who represent it. I represent the law. You'll speak more civilly. Okay. Well, Nelson, why don't you spell Now, just a minute. Another thing, Howard. We don't carry tales in here. We always let a fellow do his own telling. Yeah. If you'll just sign the papers, Mr. Johnson, I'll be getting back. All right. There you are. Thank you. Now, Howard, you come along with me. We'll meet some of the boys and see what the cook's got for lunch. Hey, why don't you eat your soup, fella? None of your business. Well, what are you looking at it for? Is there something wrong with it? Let me alone, will you? I'm thinking. Yeah? Well, if you'd have done that before, you wouldn't be here. Yeah? They don't like me here. These guys are all looking at me funny like. Johnson don't like me either. He thinks I got a bad record. They think I'm going to make trouble. They want to get rid of me. Look at that soup. Them black specks is poison. Yeah, that's it. They're trying to poison me. Well, they ain't going to get away with it. They ain't going to get away with it. They ain't. They ain't going to get away with it. I told them they had poison me. Hey, what's the idea of turning the table over? Look what you've done to my pants. Well, they're trying to poison me. Oh, you're nuts. I'm not nuts. They're trying to kill me, I tell you. Oh, shut up. I won't shut up. You can't make me shut up. They ought to give you a poke in the kiss. Well, go on. Try it. Start something. Hey, fella. Come on. Let's teach this smart kid a lesson. Yeah, come on, yeah. Yeah. Twenty-seven months later, Howard Clinton Owens again stood in the office of the superintendent of the state reformatory. Well, Owens, the board has acted favorably on your parole. You are to be released today. Is that so? You've been a problem, Owens. I don't mind telling you that. Mm, thanks, warden. I wasn't even trying. I'm a superintendent of this school, Owens, not a warden. Well, what's the difference? It's still a jail to me. Uh, but you're wrong. I don't suppose you've learned much since you've been here. Now, that's what you think. Now, this is the finest training school I could have asked for. I know my way around now. Around? Yeah. I know how to wire around the ignition of an automobile any time I want a car. I know how to get the combination off a safe. And just how to jimmy a window without leaving a mark. I'm smart, see? Yes, I do see. And besides that, I know just how hard to sock a dame so she won't squawk while you're getting her purse. And just how hard to squeeze a bird's Adam's apple to cut off his wind without killing him. That is, if you don't want to kill him. And uh, you learned all that here, did you? Yeah. Oh, most of it. Of course, I know a few things when I come here. But not much about the more refined sort of crime. Listen, Warden. The world owes me for all the years I put in this stinking joint, see? And all them other times I was in jail when I was a kid. I'm going to get paid for all that time, Warden, get me? Well, when you were a kid, what, what do you think you are now? I'm dry behind the ears. Yeah. I suppose you never thought of working. Work? <laughs> That'll make me laugh. Well, why should I work? It's too easy to get along without it. I know, see. I've been to the state's very best reformatory. I'm finishing school today. Graduate. Yes, Owens, you are. And at the rate you're going, you'll enroll immediately in some penitentiary for a course of postgraduate work. Mm, that a boy, Warden. That's the spirit. Well, I'll be seeing you in church. <laughs> Less than a month later, Owens was arrested in Miami, Florida, on suspicion of having committed a felony. He was released for lack of evidence. Six months later, a bank in Georgia was robbed of $3,000. The description of the bandit tallied with that of Howard Owens. Then the young criminal dropped from sight. Had he met his match in some quick-fingered law enforcement officer? Had he at last reformed? Was he serving a sentence in some remote prison? Where was Howard Clinton Owens? Red dust 
swirled behind a heavy sedan that slid to a stop in front of a bank in a small Oklahoma town. Two well-dressed young men sauntered into the bank. In a vernacular of the street, my friend, this is a stick-up. What? Well, come on, get into the vault, all of you. You customers, too. You get cop robbing banks on there. Yeah, that'll be too bad, madam, and you'll get shot if you don't do just what I tell you. Now move. That's it. Back in there, all of you. Come on, close the door, Sam. Okay, Sam, let's get going. You take that cage, and I'll take this one. Okay, hon. Easy going, man. I told you, dear cinch. I got about two grand out of that cage. Yeah, and I got three out of mine. Nice pay for five minutes' work. Yeah, not bad. Let's see now. That ought to pay for the first year I spent in the reformatory. Five days later, two young men walked into the American bank in Covington. We're taking charge of this bank. Into that vault, all of you. Yes, sir. Put the money in this sack, guy. That is the bank's money. We don't want any of that that belongs to widows and orphans. Just what the bank owns and what's insured. Look at them birds, Howard. They're so scared they can't talk. Yeah, yeah, I've been like that a lot of times myself. See what's in the cabinet, Sam. Okay. Hey, look, rifles and a pack of rods. Yeah, bring them along. Lock that vault door first. I already locked it. Now, let's walk, not run to the nearest exit. All right, will you, kid? How much? Oh, about six grand. Uh, that's about another year at the state's finishing school paid for. Gee, boss, you sure keep your head on these jobs. Yeah, but well, we're going to need some cool thinking. How come? We're going to have every copper in this state after us before we know it. Owens was right. Within a quarter of an hour, radio, telephone, and teletype had carried the description of the bandits to every peace officer within a hundred miles of the robbery. Owens and his companion were now definitely identified. All roads were watched. Armed men waited patiently in remote sections of the country, watching every passing car. On a highway near Salisaw, Oklahoma, a group of deputies sat in their parked car scrutinizing the passing traffic. Doesn't look like we're going to find the boys tonight. Uh, beginning to look that way. Now, you fellas all know what to do if we spot them. Sure, sure, brother. Yeah. We'll get out in the road and stop them, and you boys keep your guns on them, and a couple of us will take them. Say, that might be them now. Where? Right down the road there. See that car come? That's them. Get going, boys. Well, they see us all right. They're stopping. Cover them, boys. All right, you mavericks. Reach for the sky. We got you covered. Oh, yeah? How do you like this, copper? <coughs> Wait a minute, boys. They've got rifles. That's a cinch to hold up those cops with those rifles. Blast them, you dope. What do you think of doing? Why, you couldn't hit a barn if you was inside it. Boy, I got that copper that time. Oh, boy. Look out, you dope. Keep your head down. Oh! They hit me hard. Uh, help me, help, hard. Uh, that's why I told you to keep your head down. Oh, help, hard. Help me, help me. Go on, get out of here. I ain't wasting my time with no deadheads. On October 7, 1935, a young man drove an automobile into a service station in Santa Ana, California. Good evening, sir. Fill her up? Not quite. Just act natural and nothing's going to happen to you. Y y yes, sir. Yeah, and keep your hands down and don't give any sign of what's happening. In case you're worried about it, this bulge in my pocket is a gun, and I know how to use it. That's, that's all right. I'll take your word for it. Get inside and close the door. Now let's have what's in the till and make it snappy. Okay. Now turn off the lights. Well, what's the big idea? You'll find out. Get going. Well, what are you going to do? I Just keep quiet for a few minutes and get in the car. Okay, mister, this is the end of the line for you. Get out. Yes, sir. And keep your mouth shut, or I'll come back and shut it for keeps. Good evening. I'm the new collector. I want that money you got. Hey, wait a minute. We don't deliver our money to anybody we don't know. That's so? Well, maybe you know this guy in my pocket better. His name is Colt. You ever hear of him? Oh. Stick up, huh? Yeah, that's the idea. You catch on quick. Okay, you can relax. It's inside in the till. What an unusual place to keep money. Move. Oh, take it easy, fella. I'm nervous, pal, and my fingers twitch when I get nervous. Now get that jack. All right. 
There you are, buddy. Pretty slim pickings for the chance you're taking. Mr. Still, I don't take chances. Get started. You're going for a ride. Oh, now, now, now listen, fella. I was just kidding. Look, look, guy. I got a wife and a kid. I won't squawk to the cops. Honestly. Nah, ain't that tough. Go on. Get in that car. No, no. No, wait a minute. That's a better car parked on the grease rack. Yeah, yeah but that's a, that's a customer's so car. So what? Get in it. I haven't decided yet. Don't talk so much. Now, look, you could rip out the phone, and I couldn't call anybody till you had a chance to get away. It's you that needs a chance, buddy, not me. Just sit still and hang on. We're going places. It's as far as you go. Scram. Hey, what's the idea? This is ten miles from town. I said scram! Oh. Now, when I say scram, I don't want any guys hanging around. After his victim had been left unconscious beside the highway, Howard Owen was speeding along the road near Bakersfield. Alert officers and highway patrolmen watched every passing car, hoping to encounter the bandit. Near the Bakersfield city limits, two city officers, Jim Brady and John Lonsbury, wait in their car. Yeah, there's nothing I like better than chasing tough guys driving high-powered cars. Yeah, I'm crazy about it, too. Especially when you have to puncture a gas tank and get a face full of tetra -ethyl. Hey, quiet a minute. I hear a siren. Maybe Minter and Walker spotted a speeder. I see his red light. John, look. It's a Buick. That's our man, all right. Here we go, boy. Hang on. Boy, this will be good if we do it. This will be a good trick if we didn't do it. Minter's sure riding that guy. And how? Better hit that siren. Oh, the time okay. Hold on, John. If he made that turn, we can. Oh, it's things like this that make me wish I was back on the ranch. Yeah, we'll let this bird get away and we'll both be there. Well, this is a dead-end street. There's a Buick. Hey, Thanks, Minter. Hey, Toby, where'd you go? All right, let's bring the bus car. I see him. But again, Howard Owen outshot the law and outran his pursuers. Dodging in and out of freight cars, over moving trains through irrigation ditches, Owen's escaped. Brady and Lounsbury returned to the police headquarters. A few minutes later, at the Kern County Sheriff's Office, the phone rings. Sheriff's Office, Lyons speaking. Hey, hello. This is George Cooper. I've just been held up. Where? Right in front of my house. A young fellow with a gun took my car and drove off with it. Huh? Which way did he go? He went to the west. How long ago was this? About ten minutes. Okay, we'll get right on it. Hey, Jensen, Roberts, Bardo, McMahon. That Los Angeles bandit just held up George Cooper, stole his car, and headed west on Chester Avenue. Go get him! <laughs> Officers immediately started a search for the young bandit, but meantime, he had wrecked the stolen automobile and within a few moments managed to steal another car and continue on his way. Balked at every turn, the officers continued their search. Surrounding counties were warned to be on the lookout for the criminal. Meantime, word came that another service station had been held up and robbed and the attendant kidnapped. Every officer in Sheriff Champion's office was placed on duty in an effort to apprehend the fugitive. Then, in the early evening of the following day, word came that Owens had been sent seen in fellows. Deputies Act Jensen, Bardo, McMahon, and Roberts immediately rushed to that small community. Act, I'm going to park the car on that hill right over there and keep a watch on this house where the constable said this monkey was supposed to be hiding. I can see the house and most of the town from there. If he comes out this side, I'll keep a spotlight on and you fellows take him. Okay. McMahon and I'll take the other side of this joint and keep an eye out for him. If he's in there, he'll be coming out. Okay. Be careful, though. He's dangerous. How'd you get the tip this guy was out here? Len Roberts and I came out here this morning looking for him. 
told the constable to keep watching for the bird. Huh? Sometime this afternoon, the constable saw him. But our hold-up artist was a little too quick for him and got away. So they think he's in that house, huh? Yeah. He stole a car off a parking lot in Bakersfield. Yeah, I know about that. That's the car parked in the backyard there. If he tries to make a break for it, we'll nab the gentleman. Hey, hey. look. There's a man coming down the stairs at the back of that house. That's our man. I bet my hat on it. You want to take him now? No, no. Wait till we're sure. Well, we'll fool around and let him get away. No, we won't. Come on. Hey, you! Come down from there. Next to you, copper! Leave him have it, Mac. He, he'll get in the way, Axe. Eh? Then he'll get it. Don't shoot! Sounds like Glenn spotted him. You got me. Don't shoot! Don't kill me! I didn't mean it. I wasn't shooting sure that you fellas honest. Don't kill me. I'm hit! Hold it, Glenn. We got him. Please don't shoot me. Please don't. Oh, pipe down. Please. Stop your sniveling. We're not going to hurt you. Please don't. Please don't. You know, Mac... Someday I'm going to stick a pin in one of these tough guys, and I'll bet my hat he'll bleed lemon juice. In just a moment, Sheriff Chapness will give us the concluding facts of our program. Remember the old iron bridge that used to span the river in your hometown? And the sign printed on it which read... Five dollars fine for driving faster than a walk. How times have changed. Nowadays, we say... Real Grande Cracked is fine for any kind of driving, fast or slow. And that, friends, is putting it mildly. The rest of the story is that Real Grande Cracked is the gasoline that goes in the tanks of the cars that track down the enemies of society and catch them. Not only does this finer motor fuel power more police cars and more fire engines, ambulances, and other life and death automotive equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand, but Rio Grande Cracked is the gasoline upon which a preponderance of California state and federal government officials depend to speed their emergency cars on their ways more swiftly, surely, and economically. Are you one of the tens of thousands of motorists benefiting by this great gasoline? If not, be up to date. Be thrifty. It will cost you less in the smooth, long run to get Rio Grande cracked and enjoy the police car performance of this, the most highly acclaimed gasoline in the West. And now, Sheriff Chambers. The captured man was Howard Owen. He had not been wounded, but like all criminals of his type, he turned yellow when cornered. Brought to my office, he not only confessed his California activities to me, but bragged about his many criminal escapades. He was tried separately for all his crimes committed in Southern California and is now serving six separate sentences in Folsom Prison. His is another life of crime that has failed to pay. Thank you, Sheriff Champness. County Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars to cancellation broadcast 239 regarding a holdup and kidnapping. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Cliff.